are. Good afternoon, everyone. I am Paul Owano. And today, I'm going to talk about something different. Let's get out of the office for a while and let's learn something new for the new year. So today, I'm going to talk about uh, dragon boating. So this is, this is just an intro into the sport. So a little about me. So I am a software engineer. I, I have been for uh, 11 years. But I'm also a runner and a dragon boat paddler. So I'm the team manager of Poseidon, which is actually like Smart Seagulls uh, dragon boat team. So you can see here our picture. So this is after the competition we had last, uh, last April. So my objective for this presentation, at the end of this presentation, you'll be able to familiarize yourself with the sport. Then later, to, you'll be able to demonstrate the proper paddling form. You'll be able to describe the types of teams or crews and the uh, boat seating arrangement. And finally, enumerate the equipment needed if, you, if ever you want to join uh, one of our trainings. So my outline will be a brief history and an uh, overview and uh, a little about how to paddle. Then I'll talk about uh, what's entailed in the training. And then finally, what happens when you race. So uh, Dragon Boat uh, originated in China 2,500 years ago. It was a folk ritual. Uh, meant to appease the gods, so they uh, went out in boats into the river and sprinkled rice onto the river. But modern dragon boat racing started in 1976 in Hong Kong, and in the 1990 and in 1991, the International Dragon Boat Federation was created to uh, make the standards or the, the rules. Uh, currently, there are 60 plus uh, countries with dragon boat teams. So this is a picture of what a race looks like. So let's start with uh, the parts of a dragon boat. So here we see the the head of the dragon and then this is the tail. Uh, but usually during training, these two parts are removed because uh, they are quite masala, so we don't want them damaged. So here, this is the drummer, and then this will be the, the steering wheel so will be uh, situated here, and all the paddlers will be here in the center. Um, so we have different types of crews, but all crews have one drummer and one steers person. So as you can see, this is the drummer here, and then this is the steers person. So the drummer will give commands to the whole boat, and then all of the paddlers will follow what the drummer will say. And then the drummer will also make, uh, uh, set the pace for everyone. So a standard crew is 20 paddlers, so that's 10 in the left and 10 on the right. And then a short boat um, crew will have 10 paddlers, that's 5 and 5 on the left and the right. So a crew is divided into a pacer, engine, and turbo. So these are the paddlers here. So the pacers, we call them pacers because they set the pace for the whole boat. They have to be sensitive uh, with the capability of uh, their teammates. So if they feel that uh, other paddlers are having a hard time, so they adjust their pace. So they're closest to the drummer because they can also communicate with the drummer and the drummer can also um, easily give commands to the pacers because they can hear very, very quickly. And then everyone else, uh, everyone else will have to follow the pace. So everyone has to be in synchronicity. Uh, everyone will have to be synchronized so that the boat will um, uh, propel forward efficiently. So uh, the pacers are usually the most lightweight paddlers. The engine are the most heavy. We don't want to put the heavy paddlers in the back or in the front so that uh, the boat will be balanced. And then the turbo, they are the middleweight uh, paddlers and they are usually, usually the strongest paddlers. So a uh, little trivia, in dragon boating we don't row, we paddle. So rowing is going backwards, paddling is going forward. So let's talk about paddling. So here I brought with me a, an actual paddle. So these are the parts, this is called the grip or the T, because it's from as a T. This is the shaft, and then this is the tail. These, the, these are the three most important parts of a paddle. And then how you hold it is you put your hand like this, the, the top, and then here it has to be one uh, one hand um, away from the blade. Okay, so that's how you properly properly hold the paddle. So I'm gonna, gonna demonstrate how to properly uh, perform a stroke. So so there are four uh, there are four parts of a stroke. The first one is you have to reach. Okay, so this is very important because since we're Asians, we're Filipinos, we are we are shorter and we have shorter arms. So we have to reach as much as we can. If you're competing with like Australians or uh, uh, Americans, um, we, we already have an advantage. 
water. So we have to reach as far as possible to get as much water as possible. So that's the reach. And then the catch is when you dip the paddle into the into the water. So the key here is not to make a splash. Okay. And then next, uh, once the paddle is fully immersed in the water, like the water is here, you you do a pull. Okay. You do a quick pull so that you propel the boat forward. You have to. You also have to kick the boat with your uh, one leg, and then your other leg should support your body so that uh, you don't fall. Okay. So when you pull, you also push with your with your foot. Okay. So the key here is not to pull it with your arm. You pull with your back muscles, with your body. So the way to do that is you keep this arm straight so that you'll be forced to pull it with your body. So you only uh, bend it when, when you're about to finish the stroke. Okay? okay. So. If you use your arm, what does it look? So if you use your arm, it's just like that. Oh. And you get tired very easily. Oh. Yeah. And then, yeah, so that's why the, the the drummer will always say reach, reach, and lean forward. So if you lean forward, you will be forced to pull with your body. Okay, so I like to have uh, someone to volunteer. No, and you, do you want to volunteer? <laughs> Before he starts, uh, I'll show you the proper form. So they form a letter A. So they form a letter A with their body. Letter A. Okay. That's the proper form. Uh, okay, so go Chris. Okay, so this is the proper way to do it. And then here, like that. Okay. So reach, catch, pull. Pull. Good. Okay. Uh, you lean more forward so that you can forward, forward. Okay, good. And so pull, pull it with your body. Okay, keep this straight while you pull. Okay, good. One more, one more. Okay, keep this straight until you reach here. Yeah. Okay, one more, one more. Okay, very good. A round of applause, please. It's a good workout. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So before I proceed, um, here are the most common commands in a, in a dragon boat. So um, uh, during a race, uh, the drummer will give this command. So standby is, you already have to do like this. Standby. Attention in the water. Then go is you start paddling. Okay. And then easy is you stop paddling. So stand by, everyone gets in position. <laughs> Attention. Go. Paddle. So, so easy. The, the paddle is already uh, under. When you're when you go, uh, when the attention is already under the. Left handed or Ah, so you choose uh, which uh, which side you paddle on. So either left or right, whichever is comfortable for you. So uh, there are different stroke types. Um, most of them are the longs and the uh, last kick. So uh, the drummer can say, for example, he can say, "Ready for longs." So uh, these are very long strokes. Okay. So uh, this is meant to uh, give you more time to recover. So that's that's like a few milliseconds of rest. When you finish a long stroke, you you have more time to recover and rest before you do the next stroke. That's just a few milliseconds. So longs are usually uh, more um, restful compared to the other ones, like power longs, hard, or last kick. So the command will be ready for last kick. Now. So when the uh, drummer says now, everyone will do that stroke. <clears throat> so uh, another trivia, Dragon Ball Paddling burns 600 calories per hour. So, so it's a good exercise. You want to try it out? So, <laughs> We have a practice this weekend. But you need to be a swimmer, right? No need. You just have to be able to just uh, swim like for survival. <laughs> and we we'll also provide the life vest. Did it happen that the boat? Came yes, during our race, it happened to us, and there was a typhoon. Oh. So, the waves were very high. To your team? Yeah. The Poseidon? Yeah, but uh, usually there is a Coast Guard. 
Now they will, they will come. Plus it was during <laughs> it's okay. We have so we have swimming lessons for the team, and then we also have we provide free uh, life vest. Then we also have capsize training. So if you ever capsize, you already know what to do. Why did you have the race? The race when it was. Um, because um, I don't know. We just wanted to. <laughs> we went to we went to that place, or it was very far, so. Um, just actually it was in Dumaguete, so we didn't want to go home, not doing anything, so we just uh, uh, Actually, when it started, the waves weren't very high yet, but when it comes like the race stopped. So what we do during trainings, uh, we have these uh, So what we do during trainings, so we have pool training, of course, and then we also have pool training, so pool training is important because the water uh, in the pool is very hard to pull, so it gives you more endurance. And then we also have land training, so basically gym, weights, running, biking, etc. So this, uh, the land training is a uh, personal commitment, but it's highly encouraged that you share your progress with the team so that they will also be encouraged to do their own land training. So training schedule, it varies per team. So uh, sometimes, uh, so some teams have like three, three times a week, four times, some even just one time, one, once per week. So what to bring if ever you want to join us? So the clothes, anything that you feel comfortable in, and uh, that's uh, what about. So maybe dry fit clothes. Maybe if you already have running clothes, that's, that's good. Footwear should be rubber so that you can grip the, the boat. And then bottle of water. Uh, we we encourage uh, no sharing of water because your teammates also need their own water. And then, um, so we provide this for the first timers, the paddle and the life vest. So we train in uh, Montana. So we also do testing so that we will know who to put in a racing boat. So we do endurance, strength, and time trials. So for example, the endurance, endurance test, we, we roll for a set time and we, we determine the distance, distance covered. So basically it's like benchmarking to see who should be seated where in a boat, in a racing boat. Okay, so racing, what happens uh, uh, in a race? So there are different categories in a race, we decide which categories to join. So there are men's, women's, mixed, and masters. Masters is like for 40 years old and above. So the common distances are 250 meters, 300 meters, 500 meters. And even last month there was a, uh, uh, no, last November there was a 21 kilometer race in Tacoma. It was very fun. And then uh, usually the race format is like this. Uh, there's eliminations, semifinals, and then finals. So usually a race will just end in like uh, less than a whole day. So before I um, before I end, uh, do you happen to know what this number is? Uh, what this number means? It's world record. Sorry, like that? World record. Yes, correct. That's a world record. Oh. So 40 seconds is set by the Philippines national team. Oh. It was set in uh, 2009. So uh, aside from this, we, we have other world, world records. The Philippines has many world records in dragon boating. So um, I encourage you, if you have time, uh, try, to us, try to take part in a sport that the Philippines is known worldwide for. Now we know. So, uh, I don't know. That's so, it. Any questions? So, I have a question. So, uh, although it will burn 600 calories, oh. um, but you don't eat your meat. 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 Ah yeah, so it will build up your 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 your. It will make you leaner. Basically, yeah. So your question is: Is it a requirement? Requirement, ba ang name ni? Or mas better siya ng kung ano? Um. So there are teams that have weight requirements and height and height requirements. Ah, if it's a boat, then I don't need to. Kana. What's the height requirement? It depends on the team, but I I noticed that the Philippine Coast Guard team they're very tall, usually, and then the UP team. In Manila, they have a weight requirement. But for Poseidon, for, for the Lexmark team, yes. no, um, we accept well, anyone who is, uh, who is willing to join. Yeah. But when we actively look for new members, we already, we look for those already with average weight. Because uh, 
Because when we reach, it makes us a bridge. It puts us a bridge. It puts us a bridge. It puts us a bridge. As long as you're BMI. BMI, yeah. BMI. BMI. As long as you're not overweight. But we we actually have obese members. Oh no. No, no, I'm just saying that we are open to anyone who is a bit too sweet for you. Let's not clap for you. No, we are not recognized because uh, because of the members. Yeah. There is, there is, there is. And who are the members of the facility? Employees. So there are a lot of security guards that are members. And then for the employees, we have Karin, Tariman, Marika, Mike Hub, Mamet, Quincy. There are a lot of us. Uh, DJ he joined, but not not another member. So around 80%, 90% are Lexmark employees and security and uh, ex-Lexmark also. Around 10% are non, not connected in any way to the Lexmark. Aside from the race, and so my mind um, being part of that? Um, basically, race <laughs> it's just race, yeah. Race. So we train to the race. To race. But That's if cool. you're really... Um, if you're really serious with, you know, getting lean and being more healthy, you join uh, the training very, uh, very easily. How often do you train? So for our team, we used to train four times a week, but now it's now three times per week. So Saturday, Sunday, and then we have Wednesday. So Saturday, Sunday is in Mactan. Ah, uh, in si Sibuyat Club. And then on Wednesdays, we do it in Avellana Swimming Pool. So, Paul, how many <coughs> members or paddlers in a minimum or in a boat? In a boat? Mm -hmm. Or there is a maximum also, or depending on the size of the boat? So, the, there are no restrictions to the size of uh, how many you can have in a team, but when you race, you have to select whether you're going to compete in a standard uh, boat so a standard or a uh, short boat. Okay. So, it's 10 and 20, uh, 20 and 10, standard and short. Aside from the design of the boat, uh, the, you know, both ends. What differentiates it from the regular boat? You know, design the way it is so the so the seats are really numbered, so you'll uh, really be able to determine if this is a standard boat or a short boat. And then some, um, uh, uh, all of those boats have like a foot stopper where you can put your foot. On the front and on the back, so that you can push your just back to the seat. And then, yeah, there's the drum. Some other was the drum. So, so we, we, we can uh, participate in the training, but. Uh, yes, yeah, so what did your base and uh, You just want to wait for the I don't care. <laughs> because I asked you. Uh, you can actually train if, even if you don't want to race, but. Uh, if there's an upcoming race, um, the racers will be prioritized in the training. So you may have to be, you may have to, you know, load at the sec second time or not be able to load at all. Okay, how does it affect your body? Your less body in one side, but actually the good because of the good yeah, side. Or one another. Theoretically, they say that there's a difference, but I did not, I haven't noticed a difference. At all. So it, that's a whole body exercise, by the way. So it's your arms and then your back, and then even your legs, yeah. even your legs yeah. are exercise. And then also during our warm, during uh, during our warm ups, we do a lot of exercises for the core. Mm. It's a whole body exercise. Thank you very much.